May 21st, and welcome to another episode of Stand Tall, or as I should be calling it, the principles of war, um, and how to win friends and influence people, and the principles included therein. And so we're doing it just chapter title and end of chapter principle at a time instead of reading the whole chapter. And then we're going to dive into um, Tuesday or Woozy Tuesday, uh, going to the ancient military text of the Woozy. So let's first start out with Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Chapter 3. He who can do this has the whole world with him. He who cannot walks a lonely way. All right. And so we just talked about how to always regard other people. Principle three, arouse in the other person an eager want. He who can do this has the whole world with him. He who cannot walks a lonely way. So in a nutshell, the three principles from part one are principle one, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Principle two, give honest and sincere appreciation. And principle three, arouse in the other person an eager want. So you have to make them believe it's their idea in many ways. That's just another way of saying that. What do they want, right? Arouse in them their want, not just their need, their, their Maslow's hierarchy, right? Okay, so we're going to turn now to the woozy. We're on verse three of chapter five, adapting in the field, which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic opening. Marcus Wu said, imagine there's a huge army of well-trained, brave men. The army backs onto narrow trails with mountains on one side and a river on the other. There's a deep gully defended by the enemy's powerful crossbowmen. Retreat is a safe option. To advance would be to enter a storm. The enemy is well supplied with food. A prolonged struggle is unrealistic. Wu Qi replied, quite a challenging scenario. This sort of situation requires more than just cavalry and chariots. It demands sage-like strategy. You would need a huge force with thousands of chariots and cavalry, as well as infantry. Divide your army into five smaller forces and send each into a different direction. When the enemy sees this, they will be caught off guard and confused. If the enemy keeps to their position to shore up their defenses, send out emissaries to find out the enemy's intentions. Before I continue, but to finding out the enemy's intentions, this is kind of like the principle that we just learned, arousing them in an eager want. All right. If they are willing to withdraw and show your side, then your side should do the same. If the enemy does not listen, kills your messenger, and burns his letter, then attack at once with your five divisions. It's interesting because of what happens in Sparta, or in 300, essentially, with the Spartans, and they send the messenger from Xerxes, and then... They kill the messenger, the messenger doesn't return, and the next thing you know, Xerxes is sending the army. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened or the whole reason, but if Xerxes is coming from one of these ancient, you know, Eastern military philosophies, then attack with one of your five divisions. I mean, that could be very much uh, a historical nugget there. I would love for someone to verify that in the comments. If you win the battle, do not give chase. If the tide is against, you retreat with all speed again we we see this this retreat mentioned like from sun tzu's art of war uh from the daily stoic reflections and now in the woozy and that just goes to show you that like it's not stupid to to give up if it's like like and it doesn't even have to be life or death you know we can metaphorize it into a life and death situation because you know maybe the business will fail if we continue down this path or the marriage will end because we continue down this path or we'll lose our job because we're not willing to retreat from some you know whatever right so it takes on many meanings in order to feign a retreat move one division forward in an orderly fashion before engaging the enemy in a sudden attack use another two divisions to engage the enemy in front and cut off their retreat the last two divisions should make a surprise attack on the enemy's positions from their flanks. When all, when all five divisions attack at once, they will have a great impact. 
this is how one can assault a strong enemy. All right, so by feigning retreat, and then attacking from the flanks in coordination. And so just as we wrapped up the, the first part, the big secret of dealing with people and fundamental techniques in handling people. And if you want to gather honey, don't kick over your beehive. These, these very different things from, from how to win friends and influence people. Uh, this is a good book if you haven't read it, but now that we are wrapping up part one, in a nutshell, right, don't criticize, condemn, or complain, give honest and sincere appreciation, just kind of like approaching the enemy if they're willing to have discussions. And so as we move into six ways to make people like you, and continuing tomorrow with the art of war, let's continue to stand tall.